For example, he says that heaven and hell is like this. He said, oh, he's a denier of the truth. He says, Barzakh is like that. He says, oh, he's a denier of the truth. He says, spiritual death is something we can do now. Oh, he's denying the truth. Now, Imam Sajjad has something similar to this in this tradition. In the, I'm starting from the middle now. Faqala, law alama Abu Dhar ma fi qalb Salman la qatalahu. If Abu Dhar knew what was in the heart of Salman, now here la qatalahu can be interpreted. Allah my Majesty gave six interpretations of how you can translate la qatalahu. Someone will, will most certainly kill something or someone. But the pronouns, where do they go? We have two pronouns here. The one in Qatala, this, this entity will kill another entity. Who? La Qatala, who? There were six different, I'm not going to go through all six, but that which appealed to me was the knowledge of Abu Dhar would have killed Abu Dhar if he knew the knowledge of Salman. He couldn't tolerate it. People's understanding differs. And let's say you believe that hell is something semi-immaterial and someone, your friend, believes it's going to be physical. There's no point arguing about it. You try to convince them if they don't believe, that's it, it's okay. Some people, they can't go beyond their physical interpretation of things. There's no need to insist. Some people can, they can, they have to be satiated. And then Imam Sajjo says, inna, inna ilm al-ulama sa'abun mustas'ab. The knowledge of the ulama, ulama being a plural of alim. Okay, not people like me. Alim, the plural is alimun. We have it in the Quran. But ulama is something else. Someone who doesn't go to the seminary can also be one of the ulama. Because it's a plural of alim, not alim. Alimun, we have it in the Quran, referring to the plural of Alim. You know, he says the knowledge of the ulama is sa'abun, is difficult. Mustasab, I think, I'm not sure what mustasab means. Maybe complex, I'm not sure. La yahtamiluhu illa malakun muqarrab. No one can bear the knowledge of the ulama, save the archangels. O oh, Nabiyun Mursal, the messengers of Allah, O oh, Abdun Mu'min, Imtahan Allah, Qalbahu Lil Iman. O oh, people like me and you, the hearts of Mu'mineen who have been examined by Allah. If they pass it, they will acquire, they can bear that knowledge. Wa inna ma sara Salmanu min al ulama. Salman al Farsi became one of the ulama. The knowledge he had was higher than many of the prophets, according to this tradition. لِأَنَّهُ إِمْرَعُونَ مِنَّا أَهْلَ bayt. He was one of us, Ahlul Bayt. Remember, كُلُّ تَغِيِّن وَنَغِيِّن Ali. Salmon fitted that. Now, then Imam Sajjad recites this. It's like a poem. He says, إِنِّي لَأَكْتُمُ مِنْ إِلْمِي جَوَاهِرَةً Verily, I conceal the substance of my knowledge. Imam Sajjad is saying this. His knowledge is infinite. He's concealing the substance of his knowledge. Because if the because if the ignorant, they're not aware of it. If they were to become aware of the substance of knowledge which I have, فَيُفَتِّتُنَا means they would cut me into pieces, the ignorant, because they can't take it. وَقَدْ تَقَدَّمَ فِي هَذَا أَبُو حسن. This was the case with Abu Hassan, Amir al-Mu'mineen. إِلَى الْحُسَيْنِ وَوَسَّى قَبْلَهُ الْحَسَنَا And he instructed the same to Hassan and Hussein, the same applied. To act in this way. There's so much ilm, there's so much knowledge that if I were to disclose it, 
Mimaya abodol wathana. They say you are one of those who worships idols. Look. They would say to the Imam, the Ma'su Imam, you're an idol worshipper. Because they don't understand. They can't take it, they can't bear it. When you see people attacking you for different things, it's okay. They, they can't take it. Don't call them a kafir or this, that and the other. It's okay, just relax, slowly. وَلَا إِسْتَحَلَّ رِجَالٌ مُسْلِمُونَ دَمِي The Muslims, they would deem the spilling of my blood as legitimate. If they were to be disclosed what I know of the truths of religion. يَرَوْنَ أَقْبَهَ مَا يَأْتُونَهُ حَسَنَا They would see the most ugliest of actions as proper. The most ugliest of actions to the Imam, they would regard as proper. You see? In one tradition from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, إِنَّ لِلْقُرْآنَ ذَهْرًا وَبَتْنًا The Qur'an has an outer aspect and an inner aspect. وَلِبَتْنِهِ بَتْنَا Its inner aspect has another inner aspect. Keeps on getting deeper. إِلَى سَبْعَةِ أَبْتُنْ Seven times over. That inner aspect has another inner aspect. That inner aspect has another inner aspect. Go deeper and deeper seven times. In some traditions, it doesn't say seven. It says 700,000. The point is, Allah's knowledge has no end. Everyone to their own capacity, though. There's no need to interpret everything just superficially and to the physical realm. Okay, thank you very much. Inshallah, now I'll just quickly go through Dhikr Musibat and Inshallah, we'll finish there. This, what I'm about to read, is from a Sunni, authoritative reference. It's by Ibn Qutaybah. He died in the year 276 after Hijrah. So he died in the 3rd century. He was from Kufa, he was Sunni, and it was during the times of, you know, maybe... 10th or 11th Imam or something, it was, he was present at that time in any case, or at least during the major occultation he was present. He has a book called al Imama wa Siyasa, and he's written something in relation to how Amirul Mu'mineen gave allegiance to Abu Bakr. That, that's under the title of How Ali Was Taken to Give Allegiance. It's in the earlier parts of the book. The book I had, I think it was page 16 or 17. Ibn Qutayb is very authoritative. Now some Wahhabis try to discredit him and say this book wasn't Ibn Qutayb's book. You see, shallow arguments like that because in books in the 3rd, 4th, 5th century, Ibn Qutayb's al Imam wa Siyas has been referenced. It exists in books that were written in the 4th century, 5th century. Some things you, it's undeniable, you can't take it, you know, it's not as easy as that. And then Ibn Taymiyyah, who's one of the main th theoreticians of the Wahhabi school of thought, he lived around 700 years ago. Even he has said, in relation to Ibn Qutaybah, who I shall be reading from his history book, Ibn Taymiyyah said, all of Morocco place Ibn Qutayba in high esteem and respect him and whoever is at odds with him is deemed a zindir and kafir and they, the Moroccans say kullu baytin laysa fihe shay'un min tasnifihi la khayra fi the Moroccans say whichever household doesn't have one of Ibn Qutayba's works in the house that house has no blessing in it so he's an authoritative figure in the Sunni world. Now, I want to read exactly what he's written. And I'll, I'll read the Arabic and translate it at the same time. Now, my translation may not be the ac most accurate, but I've done my best. And I'm not saying anything you know, totally against what the text is saying. There may be a few mistranslations here or there, but they're not significant. 
but I want to read exactly, I want to be loyal to the text. Okay, so don't attack me for saying things in the text. This is what he is saying. وَإِنَّ أَبَا بَكْرِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْ تَفَقَّدَ قَوْمًا تَخَلَّفُوا عَنْ بَيْعَتِهِ إِنْدَ أَلِي كَرَّمَ اللَّهُ وَجْهَ So Abu Bakr was after those who hadn't paid allegiance to him. Those people who hadn't paid allegiance to him, Abu Bakr, who were in the house of Ali. May Allah dignify Ali's face. The sun is used. Why do they use this clause with Amirul Mu'mineen? Because Amirul Mu'mineen, from birth, he never bowed to an idol, whereas the others did. Or some people say when he was in the womb, wherever the Prophet would move, his face would move towards that of the Prophet. But the first is more authoritative. So he was after those who hadn't paid allegiance to him in the house. فَبَعَثَ إِلَيْهِمْ Omar. So he sent Omar to them who were in the house of Amir al-Mu'mini. فَجَاءَ He went to them. فَنَادَاهُمْ وَهُمْ فِي دَارِ Ali. Omar called out loud whilst they were in the house of Amir al-Mu'mini. فَأَيَّخْرَجُوا And those people who were in the house of Ali, they refused to come out. فَدَّعَوْ بِالْحَتَبْ Omar then requested wood وَقَالْ and he said وَالَّذِي نَفْسُ أُمَرَ in whose hands Omar's life lies تُخْرِنَ you will most certainly get out أَوْ Or I shall most certainly burn the house with those in it. Faqila lahu. Now Omar was accompanied with some people. One of them had a conscience. It was said to Omar, Ya Abu Hafs. Abu Hafs was one of the titles given to Omar, father of Hafs. Inna fiha Fatima. Fatima is in that house. Faqala wa'in. So what? Fakharaju fabayahu illa aliya. Some people did come out. Abbas was there. The children of Abbas were there. There were others there too. They came out. They did pay allegiance, except for Amir al Mu'minin. Although Lady Fatima also, but it didn't mention all of it. Amir al Mu'minin then said, Halaftu. And la akhroja wa la adha thawbi ala atiqi hatta ajma al Quran. I swear by Allah that I won't exit the house. I won't put the cloak on my shoulders, metaphor, a metaphor for in exiting the house, until I compile the Quran. The Holy Prophet had ordered him to compile the Quran in a different, in a chronological order. The Quran we have now isn't in the chron chronological order. The Holy Prophet asked him to compile it in the chronological order and to give a certain commentary to the verses. Now this happened, maybe this event which Ibn Qutayb is speaking about happened three or four days after the demise of the Holy Prophet. What happened in those two or three days after? I'll speak about that according to the Sunni references tomorrow, inshallah. So he said, I'm not going to come out. This is around, around day four. Until I compiled the Qur'an. فَوَقَفَتْ فَاتِمَةً رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهَا أَلَوْ بَابِهَا فَقَالَتْ Lady Fatima then stood at the door and said لَا أَحْدَ لِي بِقَوْمٍ حَدَرُوا أَسْوَأُ مَحْدَرٍ مِنْكُمْ I've never seen a worse presence than what I'm seeing in you people here. I've never witnessed a people's presence as you. Taraktum Rasul Allah Janazatan Baina Aidina. You abandoned the body, the corpse of the Holy Prophet in our hands. Waqatatum Amrukum Bainakum. Then you made the affair of the Muslims definitive amongst yourselves in Sarifa, referring to that. 
لم تستأمرونا you never consulted us و لم تردو لنا حقا you never assigned us our right فأتا عمر أبا بكر عمر on hearing this he went back he went to Abu Bakr فقال له عمر said to Abu Bakr ألا تأخذ هذا المتخلف أنك بالبيعة aren't you going to seize this one who's not paying allegiance to you aren't you going to seize upon him فقال أبو بكر لقنفوز then Abu Bakr said to قنفوز وهو مولا له Abu Bakr was the master of قنفوز he was a slave I mean those days slavery existed when Islam came but Islam did everything to get rid of slavery slavery in that part of the world became extinct much earlier than in this part of the world because of Islam so Abu Bakr said to Qunfuz Idhab Fad Oli Aliya Go and bring Ali Call Ali Amir al-Mu'min before me Qala No sorry Fadhaba ila Ali Qunfuz went to Ali Amir al-Mu'mini Faqala lahu Ma hajatuk Amir al-Mu'mini said to Qunfuz What do you want? فقال قنفز said يدعوك خليفة رسول الله the successor of the holy messenger referring to Abu Bakr is summoning you فقال علي أمير المؤمنين then said لسريع ما كذبتم على رسول الله how soon you've attributed falsehood to the holy messenger فرجع قنفز returned فأبلغ الرسالة he conveyed the message to Abu Bakr فبكى أبو بكر طويلا Abu Bakr cried a lot فقال عمر الثانية عمر then said a second time for a second time لا تمهل هذا المتخلف أنك البيع stop granting opportunity to he who is not giving allegiance to you فقال أبو بكر لقنفوز then Abu Bakr said to قنفوز أد إلي return to Ali فقل له and tell him خليفة رسول الله يدعوك لتبايع that the successor of the Holy Messenger is summoning you to pay allegiance to him فجاءه قنفوز قنفوز went to أمير المؤمنين فعد ما أمر به he accomplished what he was ordered to do فرفع علي صوتا علي raised his voice فقال عن سيد سبحان الله لقد ادعى ما ليس له سبحان الله they're claiming something which isn't theirs فرجع قنفوذ فأبلغ الرسالة قنفوذ returned again conveyed the message فبكى أبو بكر طويلا أبو بكر cried a lot again ثم قام أمر Umar stood up after this second time. فَمَشَوْ مَعَهُ جَمَاعَةٌ And he went towards the house with a group of people. حَتَّى أَتَوْ بَابَ فَاطِمَةٌ Until they reached the door of Fatima. Maybe the house of Ali had two doors. فَدَقُوا الْبَابِ They hit on the door. فَلَمَّا سَمِعَتْ أَسْوَاتِهِمْ When Lady Fatima heard the commotion they were causing, the sounds they were making, know that Lady Fatima cried out with her highest voice, Ya Abati, Ya Rasul Allah, O oh my Father, O oh Messenger of Allah, Mada laqina ba'dak min ibn al Khattab wa ibn Abi Qahafa. What has come to us? What are we encountering after you from the first and second? فَلَمَّا سَمِعَ الْغَوْمِ سَوْتَهَا وَبُكَاءَهَا When the people there were listening and hearing her cries and her voice in سَلَفُ بَاكِينَ The people who were accompanying Omar, they left crying. This was Lady Fatima alayhi she looked like the Holy Prophet. She spoke like the Holy Prophet. Only a few days has passed. 
Many of them left the scene crying. Look at this is a Sunni reference. It was as, as if their hearts were cut into pieces. Tan It was as if their, their livers were exploding. Omar, but Omar stayed there. With him there were some people. And they brought Ali out of the house and took him to Abi Bakr. And we thank Ibn Qutaybah for this honesty and loyalty. But this taking Ali out of the house, it's a bit more complex than that. So here we go to Sunni references very briefly. Thummanada Omar, this is a Sunni now, Aminul Islam Tabarsi's Al Ihtijaj. Thummanada Omar Be'a'la Sotihi, Hatta Asma'a Aliya. Then Omar shouted out loud with the top, on the top of his voice so that Ali will hear. La Takhrojanna, you will most certainly get out. Wal Toba Ya'anna Khalifata Rasulullah. And you will most certainly pay allegiance to the successor of the Holy Prophet, referring to Abu Bakr. Oh, otherwise, la adramanna alayka baytaka nara. I will most certainly burn the house down with fire. Thumma raja'a. Umar then left. He went back to Abu Bakr. Faqa'ada inda Abu Bakr. He sat with Abu Bakr. Wa huwa yakhafu ayakhruja alay aliyon bisayfe le maqad arafa min ba'sihi wa shiddati. He left because he was scared of what, what happens if Ali will come out with the sword. Because he knew le maqad arafa. He knew of the severity of Amir al-Mu'minin. Thumma qala le qunfuz. Then Umar said to qunfuz. In kharaja, if they come out, so be it. Wa illa if they don't come out. Faqtahim alayhi dar charge into the house. Fa'inim tana'a fa'adrim alayhim baytuhum and nar. And if they still refuse to come out, burn the house down with them in it. Fantalaqa qunfud. Qunfud left for the scene. Faqtahama Ad-dar huwa wa ashabuhu bi bighayr idhnin and they charged inside the door without permission fabadara aliyun ila sayfi liya'khudha fasabaghuhu ilay ali went for a sword to get the sword but they got the sword be- beforehand fakatharu alay they surrounded amir al-mu'minin faqabadhu they seized upon him they put a black rope around his neck, pulling him out. Now a Jew was outside seeing all this. This Jew saw what happened in the Battle of Khaybar. That Jew saw what Amir al-Mu'minin can do with the, with the door. He, he said, this, but how is he, you know, not doing anything? He converted to Islam. He says, someone who has that power, but is not doing it, it's Allah's will. He gave the shahadatain. La ilaha illallah. Wa alqaw fi unughihi hablan aswad. Wa halat fatima. Bayna zawjaha wa bayna hum in the babil bayt. Lady Fatima now, defender of wilaya, came in between. Her husband and the rest, those people, at the door of the house. Fadarabaha Qunfud Besut. Qunfud hit her with a whip. Allah ila Qunfud idribha, idribha, based on the order he was given to hit her, hit her. Fa'aljaha ila izadat baba beta. This hitting of Qunfud cornered Lady Fatima salam, behind the door, beside the door, between the door and the wall. Fadafa'aha. He pushed the door, squeezed the door. And Fatima was behind it. 
a rib on the side of her chest broke the fetus inside her womb was aborted and ever since that she was under care in the house until she became a shaheed in death. Allah laknatullah ala al qawm al